Hello there guys and welcome to this Explain 11 video. Some time back I did a complete review of the Quest Kodiak by Thranda. Since then the aircraft has received numerous upgrades. In fact, the aircraft has been revamped to work beautifully now in X-Plane 11. The textures have been completely reworked and the aircraft now utilizes X-Plane 11's PBR technology. Many new features and immersions have been introduced into the Quest Kodiak which warrants another complete review of this beautiful aircraft. Now, one of the big issues in the previous version, and I believe when I did the review, um, X-Plane 11 wasn't released yet, so I did the review on the X-Plane 10 version, and FPS was a serious problem uh, with this aircraft, especially for those with uh, low-end machines. I, I'm happy to report that uh, performance is uh, very acceptable uh, in this particular version, and uh, let me go ahead and bring up the frame rate counter here so that we can take a look at the frames and we'll say done as you can see uh, we are getting about 50 frames or so and we get about 45 frames for the amphibian uh, version which we will be taking a look at uh, briefly in in this video as we move on to the interior of the aircraft as you can see the textures have been uh, improved uh, over the previous version, uh, again taking advantage uh, of X-Plane's new PBR technology. And uh, you can also monitor the frames here. We're getting about 45, 46 frames, uh, which is very, very good uh, considering my settings. Um, the aircraft performs uh, just like the Airfoils Lab Cessna uh, or the uh, Flight Factor 757. So in terms of performance, uh, there has been vast improvements. Now, the texture work is really a work of art on this aircraft, and it does look extremely realistic, very, very immersive. And as you can hear the ambient uh, sound in the background, this aircraft has got it all. It's got, the, um, it's got a beautiful, uh, beautiful cabin, and everything has been really uh, modeled with a lot of care and with a lot of finesse and if you look here uh, at the instruments uh, you've got those really nice reflections the representation uh, of material is done quite well the leather looks like leather metal looks like metal uh, really an incredible uh, recreation of the actual aircraft and as it is always uh, the case I compare the uh, texture work and the 3D modeling uh, to the real aircraft. Unfortunately, I cannot share those photos in the video uh, due to uh, copyright. The control panel has been improved just like the rest of the aircraft and I think it's worthwhile going through the different features since many of you guys are new to X-Plane and it also has been a very long time since I've done the initial review of the Quest Kodiak. The electric tug allows you to push the aircraft. Uh, window reflection and panel reflections I think are self-explanatory and you can see the reflections on the panel here and right over there. Uh, now if you're if you're having trouble with FPS both of these if you turn both of these off it will definitely uh, give you a little bit of uh, extra FPS. Scroll visualization is simply what you see here on the screen so you can visualize uh, what's happening and the control panel gives you the ability to remove all covers tie downs close all the doors with a click of a button and it also allows you to um, turn on and off all the lights both interior and exterior uh, you can add a cargo pod to this uh, variant of the aircraft and it's got, uh, you can also add fairings, uh, which are useful in cold weather. And you can, um, you have also the chocks, which are now currently um, enabled, and the brakes are set. The livery uh, section is where you configure the colors of the aircraft, uh, which is really a nice feature. You can also edit the registration 
uh, of the aircraft, which is really, really cool. And this is a dynamic feature, so you can do whatever you want and change whatever you like, and simply go and say apply, and it will change the aircraft livery. Weight and balance is where you configure the aircraft, and I really like this uh, because you can actually use the mouse wheel now to uh, increase the uh, payload so you can actually select the weight of your passengers uh, on the air aboard the aircraft and you can also configure your fuel and if you have the cargo so the cargo pod is now open and you go to weight and balance you can also add cargo as you can see now I can add cargo over here. The camera tab is nothing but a custom camera presets uh, for you to use and you can definitely edit those if you don't like them. Uh, I particularly like the, uh, the ones that come with the aircraft. Uh, I think they're sufficient. Uh, I wouldn't really need anything more than what, uh, what has been included uh, with the aircraft. Audio. Now this is uh, this is particularly useful in this aircraft, and I will tell you why. The Quest Kodiak has a number of sound immersions, and some of those sounds are actually loud, at least for my preference they are. And so it gives you a granular control over the sound. So you have the engine volume, prop, ground volume, electrical warning, the, uh, the sound of the buttons when you click them, and the aerodynamic volume. So you can play with this and uh, you know change the volume however your heart desires. Miscellaneous. So in in this in this particular aircraft there aren't any uh, features to tweak uh, in this particular section but in the amphibian version there is a set of things that you can change in terms of the seating arrangements. We're going to take a look at that in the uh, uh, towards the end of the video, but what I'd like to do now is I'd like to close the doors, fire up the aircraft, and take it for a short flight around the French Alps. Before we fire up the aircraft and take it for a flight, let me show you how the uh, electrical tug works. So the first thing you need to make sure that your um, chunks are off and the brakes are released and now you can use your uh, joystick to move the aircraft as you can see I'm moving the aircraft uh, backwards forward and you can use the rudder to control the direction of travel very very cool indeed Okay, uh, we are now ready to fire up the aircraft and take it for a short flight. Let's see if I can remember to power up the aircraft. Uh, I didn't really look at the manual, but I'll see if I can remember how to get things started. Okay, so master battery is on, and we can start the beacon. And the uh, firewall air shutoff bulb needs to go all the way in. We need the fuel uh, right so fuel right and left are selected and let's see here uh, let's make sure the parking brake is set which it is and now we can start the uh, so avionics bus is actually turned on as well as the auxiliary and fuel pump can go to on and now you can hear the fuel pump, ignition to on, starter to high, and let's give it just a little bit of mixture. There we go, we have a good start. I think my throttle was not in the idle position. And you, you saw how, let me do this again, if you give it just a little bit of power, see how the aircraft pitches down? That is very, very realistic. Okay, um, let's see here, ignition no longer needed, and the starter is in the off position, generator is on, the alternator is on, and let's turn on our nav lights, 
taxi lights. And what else do we need here? That's fine. Let's uh, turn on some lights here. There we go. Beautiful. Just really a beautifully modeled aircraft. Uh, the, the fatality, the sounds, the ambience, everything really puts you in the mood. And I'm telling you guys, you're just really going to enjoy being in this aircraft. It, it's just really a joy uh, to be in. All right, let me bring back the yokes and let's go ahead and head over to the runway and depart. Oh, we need to turn off the the uh, auxiliary fuel pump. Now, the auxiliary fuel pump needs to go on only during takeoff and landing. So, we're ready now. Release the parking brake and let's head over to the runway. All right, so we're coming up to the runway. Let's make our final stop right over here. Set the parking brake. And let's see here. Um, strokes can go on, taxi light off, landing lights on. And what else do we need here? Everything looks okay. Let's set our flaps for departure. And right here okay so I'm gonna just bring the props a little mixture on rich and I think we're good to go at least the parking brake Right, let's get lined up and let's go. Now you can hear the wind as we roll down the runway. And let's rotate. Now you can hear the wind and there is just really a ton of immersions in this aircraft. And we're going to try to, uh, you know, we're going to try to trigger those uh, as we climb in and fly around the uh, the mountains here. Really beautiful scenery here at uh, Chambéry. Now, of course, you can tweak all these sounds, and I'm not really sure how you are hearing all these sounds, but I can hear them perfectly okay in my uh, in my headset. Two thousand feet. Make a turn here, and the just sound of the wind is just really amazing. All right, let's go ahead and uh, give it a little bit of a rudder. Did you hear that? So there's the 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 wind sound actually changes as as we uh, apply rudder. Again, very fluid, uh, very realistic, and extremely immersive. A very well done aircraft. It's really a lot of fun flying this aircraft. Alright, let's make a turn here with a little bit of rudder. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to begin our descent uh, towards uh, the airport again and we're going to make a uh, right turn momentarily and head back to the airport and land. We are now lining up with the runway to land and let me tell you guys, this aircraft is a lot of fun to fly. It's got uh, beautiful sounds, beautiful texturing, it's just really the whole shebang. This aircraft's got it all. Right, I think uh, we are at a safe uh, speed to lower our flaps. And we're going to keep it at about 80 knots for our landing.
little bit of uh, crosswind there. Touchdown. All right. A couple of things I want you guys uh, to... Well, I want you to hear one thing, a couple of things, and then I want to show you the amphibian version. So the first thing I want you to hear is the sound of the tow brakes. Uh, let us just reduce speed a bit. All right, I think that's good enough. Let's go ahead and hit the tow brake. Isn't that cool? All right, and the other thing I want you to hear is the engine sound from the outside. And this is the amphibian version of the Quest Kodiak in a very stunning delivery. Now, the, this is part of the expansion pack. The expansion pack, as I've mentioned, will cost you an additional $14.95. If you like to fly an amphibian aircraft, then I highly recommend this model. It's actually a lot of fun to fly, and I will leave it up to you guys to test this plane uh, in the water. I do want to show you one thing in the control panel, which the uh, amphibian version has. In miscellaneous here, you can enable or disable the winglets here in the back, as you can see. And there is a water rudder as well. It is retracted right now, but you can uh, extend it uh, for steering the aircraft while in the water. Uh, you can also change the interior uh, from this regular interior. Let's actually switch to the um, to the interior and show you this. So we've got the reg regular seating arrangement here, and you can change it to an executive uh, sort of uh, arrangement. And you can also have a cargo aircraft. So now this is completely a cargo plane. All right, no seats whatsoever, it's just cargo. Well, folks, this brings us to the conclusion of our video. Before we part today, I would like to extend my gratitude to Nicholas from the Xplane.org store for providing me with this copy of the Quest Kodiak, including the expansion pack. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.